Okay, welcome back everybody. I'm going to do a second video on variation of parameters here, and we'll call this a proof of concept. So, uh, basically, today just want to show that this variation of parameters formula is indeed always going to give us a solution to the differential equation we're interested in. So let's remember the setup real quick. Uh, first, we've, we've got a differential equation that we'd like to solve. Uh, and we've got a solution, actually a fundamental solution set to the homogeneous differential equation, so the corresponding homogeneous equation. Uh, so we could say this is equivalent to finding the complementary solution, yc equals c1, y1 plus c2, y2. Okay, uh, so variation of parameters doesn't tell us anything about finding this solution, uh, but if we happen to have it, which in the case that the coefficients are constant, we have methods for, uh, if we happen to have that solution, then we can construct a particular solution to the non-homogeneous part. So here's how that goes. Uh, and here's how I remember variation of parameters. So basically, I just keep in my head, we're going to take y2, and then at, at some point, we're going to subtract y1. And then I fill in the blanks. So y2 minus y1, and we need to add some stuff. Well, they both get multiplied by an integral, and that integral is of a ratio. Uh, in the denominator, we put the Ronskian of y1 and y2, which I'll just denote with a w. Here, we're, we want a, a copy of y1 in each and a copy of y2 in each, so I, I need a y1 in this numerator, and I need a y2 in this numerator. And the last thing we need is f. Not going to get by without that. So, um, really, it's this it's, it's kind of a complicated formula, but underlying is a relatively simple structure. Uh, so that's yp. Well, our job for today is going to be to check that this actually gives us a solution to our differential equation. Okay, so I've I've got got my shorthand notation written right here, just so nobody forgets what that means. W is the Ronskian y1 and y2. Alright, well if we want to verify that this works as a solution, the first thing we need to do is find its derivative. Right? If we're going to plug this into our differential equation, we already know yp, we need to find yp prime, and once we've found that, we'll find yp double prime. Then we'll plug all those into the left hand side, Let's see if we actually get f of t. So yp prime, how can we start with that? Well, if we look at just this first term, this is a product of two functions. So we could use the product rule to differentiate it. Product rule tells us we take the derivative of the first thing, that's y2 prime, times the second thing, that's the integral of y1f, over w plus the first thing, that's y2, times the derivative of the second thing. Well, the derivative of an antiderivative is just the integrand back again. So this is going to be times uh, y1f over w. There we have it, just the product rule. What about this second thing here? Well, same idea. So we're going to subtract, put the derivative inside parentheses, because once we differentiate, this product is going to turn into a sum. We want to make sure that negative gets distributed. But it's the same idea, just y1 prime times the second thing, y2f over w, plus the first thing, y1 times the derivative of the second thing, 
And once again, the derivative of an antiderivative is the original integrand back. So here we get y2f over w. Easy peasy. All right, well, we get some very nice behavior here. Notice that this and this are exactly the same thing. And since we're subtracting them, we're just going to cancel, which means we're left with this simplified first derivative, yp, excuse me, yp prime uh, is equal to y2 prime integral y1f over w minus y1 prime integral y2f over w. All right, so We've got the first derivative, now we need the second derivative. And we can start from here, we've already done our simplification. Uh, so let's find yp double prime. Same concept, both of these are products, right? So we'll apply the product rule when we differentiate. Let's do the first one in yellow. So yp double prime, the first part, we take the derivative of y2 prime, that's y2 double prime, times the second thing, y1f over w dt, and then we're going to add the first thing, y2 prime, times the derivative of the second thing, and the derivative of an anti antiderivative just gives us the original integrand back. So this is y1f over w. And then we're going to subtract this derivative. So again, let's put this in parentheses. And we'll apply the product rule. So we take the derivative of the first thing. That's y1 double prime times the second thing, the integral of y2f over w dt. And we add the first thing, which is y1 prime, times the derivative of the second thing. Well, the derivative of an antiderivative is the same thing back. This is y2f over w. All right. So we don't quite get the same simplification here, right? These aren't actually the same thing. So when we subtract these, we're not going to get 0 like we did before. Turns out that's a good thing, though. So let's let's continue rewriting this, simplifying a little bit. Uh, so first, I'm going to take these two terms. We'll write those out. So this is y2 double prime integral y1f over w minus y1 double prime integral y2f over w. And what about this last part? Well, we have a common denominator. Okay. So we could write this as plus, and we have a, a common factor of f in both of them, but we don't have any other common factors. So uh, this is really f over w times, here we have y2 prime y1. And we're subtracting y1 prime y2. Oops. First thing uh, is y1 y2 prime subtracting y1 prime y2. All right, well, that's really convenient for us because it just so happens that this is equal to w. So the w's are going to cancel, and we're just left with f here. So just to write it all out again, so we can just copy and paste this part. So it's the second derivative of yp is this plus just plain old f. 
Okay, so there we have it. We've got all, all of the ingredients we're going to need. We know YP, we know YP prime, we know YP double prime. Let's take them and plug them into that differential equation. All right, so here I've, I've just got a nice summary of all of the equations we've just figured out. Actually missing something. This yp prime gets a double prime gets a plus f. Okay, so this is just the information uh, we've already developed. Okay, so the differential equation told us that we should take yp double prime times one. plus p times yp prime plus the function q times yp and hopefully all of that will be equal to f that's what we're that's what we're after we're trying to show so let's focus on this left hand side so yp double prime that gets left alone yp prime we're going to multiply this by p so we need to multiply the right hand side by p. Uh, y p that's going to get multiplied by q. So q times q times q times, and then we're going to add them all up, get a total, and see if f is the only thing that remains. So if we sum this up, this left hand side up divide it here, uh, we get exactly the left-hand side of our differential equation. Right? Uh, so that means we should get the same thing if we add this whole right-hand side up. And we can do that in a, in a clever way. Uh, so we're going to group some terms here. So notice that these integrals are all the same as are these. Uh, and then we're left with this plus f sort of hanging out by itself. So let's factor those out and just see what we're left with. So the orange box, that was integral y1 f over w dt. And what does that get multiplied by? Well, I'm going to add all these things up. And so what I end up with is y2 double prime plus p times y2 plus q, excuse me, p times y2 prime plus q times y2. All right, that's pretty great. What happens with those pink boxes? Well, the integral that I'm factoring out is... And actually, let's write it as minus. We'll factor out that negative, too. So this is minus integral of y2f over w dt. And what do we have inside the parentheses here? Well, here's a y1 double prime. We already factored out that negative. Plus p times y1 prime. It comes from right here. And plus q times y1. That comes from right here. Uh, so the whole left-hand side of our differential equation, oh, I'm sorry. We still have the plus f, don't we? So plus f. So the whole left-hand side of our differential equation simplifies to this kind of messy-looking thing. And it's only messy looking because we're missing an observation. Remember how y1 and y2 were solutions to the homogeneous part of the differential equation? Well, that precisely means that this is equal to 0, and this is equal to 0 as well. Let's take a look back, way back to the beginning. We said y1 double prime plus p times y1 prime 
plus q times y1 equals 0. It was one of our assumptions when we started the problem. So of course, that's still going to hold. And it's we hadn't even used it yet. So it's fitting that it should pop up at the end. So if this is 0 and this is 0, it doesn't matter what we multiply 0 by. It doesn't really matter what either of these antiderivatives are. Uh, all we're going to get out from the whole thing is f, just like we wanted.